welcome everyone. Good to have you joining us uh, live online. And then those of you that are here with us, appreciate you showing up. Uh, we are, if you're wondering, I am going to have Gilbert Gomez joining me here in a second. Uh, but he is going to put some announcements for us as we get started here. Just a couple of quick things. Um, <clears throat> one, it's good to be back. I've been, um, I don't know, I feel like I've been gone for a long time, months, but it's been weeks. And so it's good to be back. Uh, we, see, we did a Texas tour with myself and Dub Alexander. We were everywhere. I'm used to looking at the camera down here. Gilbert mounted it way closer to, to heaven. So it's way up there now. Uh, good job, Mr. Gilbert. And so, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we've been we've been out of town, been doing a whole lot of fun stuff um, all over Texas, several different places. And it's good to be back. A uh, couple of quick things I want to make uh, make announcements about. One is we at the end of this month we are going to be taking the School of the Spirit out to Floresville, Texas, which is about oh maybe 45 minutes south of San Antonio. And so we'll be taking the School of the Spirit. We're going to actually be doing that weekend. We'll be focused on prophetic training, prophetic activation, uh, getting people to recognize, you know, how they're hearing God and, uh, and like their primary ways of hearing God. And then also the, uh, the secondary, like what are some other ways that they can start to hear God in, in uh, you know, expanding their capacity to hear the voice of God, to, to receive revelation uh, to understand the way he's talking to you. And so, so that's going to be a blast. We'll be doing that out there with, uh, fellow, let's see, Floresville Christian Fellowship. All right, Floresville Christian Fellowship. And uh, that's going to be, let's see, that's what, 29th and 30th of this month, Gilbert, and the 1st? Yeah, right, 29, 30, and 1st. Okay, so, so April 29th, April 30th, May 1st. That's going to be a blast. Um, I think all the information there is on the screen. So if y'all, it's free to attend. Uh, we do have, uh, we do charge for the live stream. If people want to live stream, um, uh, we will have that available as well. All that's online. You can register at uh, manywatersglobal.org and that will allow you to, uh, to save a seat and to register for the, um, for the live stream as well. I think that's on there, right, Gilbert? Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Another thing that's coming up uh, pretty quick, actually, end of May, let's see, May the 22nd, uh, it's May 22nd, I believe, that we're going to be having a uh, Church of Acts uh, potluck, picnic, whatever you want to call it, barbecue, all that fun stuff. And so we are asking for people to bring good food, right? Uh, And I think there's going to be a sign-up sheet. I'm not sure. I think that's what we talked about, Gilbert. Uh, so we will have a sign-up sheet for that. And so what we're going to do, actually, that service, the 22nd, Sunday the 22nd, we're going to be just kind of sharing uh, some vision casting, some things that we've been talking about as a leadership team, uh, thing, direction and, and things we want to implement. And so that's going to be fun. We'll do that uh, that Sunday morning for the message. And then after, immediately after service, we're going to go outside. If you want to bring a change of clothes, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty casual around here anyway, right? So... Uh, but for those of you that might dress up a little more and you want something more casual, bring bring a change of clothes. So that'll be a blast. We're going to have some fun with that. Um, and I, I love the fact that we get to just hang out, fellowship, eat together. You know, it sounds like something in the New Testament, right? And uh, we can we can have fun with that. All right. So I think that's about it, Gilbert, on our yeah. announcements. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's jump in. This is going to be fun tonight. And we got Al Bass, of course. He was the first one here tonight. <laughs> Mr. Al Bass, our uh, number one fan. And uh, uh, Mr. Kurt, good to see you. Got Mary, Margaret, awesome. Oh, man, we got a bunch of friends on here. Victoria, thank you all. Judy Burr, good to see you. <clears throat> all right, so appreciate you all. Uh, sharing, commenting, liking, all that good stuff that we uh, that we usually do. And let's see, where do I want to start? I've got a lot of different things on my mind, a lot of different things on my heart. But let me start with this. Um, I'm going to share for a minute here on uh, something the Holy Spirit began to, to minister to me about uh, earlier today. <clears throat> 
And uh, so welcome, Mr. Gilbert Gomez, the myth and the legend, all right here, present with us. Um, <clears throat> oh, are we going to? Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll let you get that camera situated here. So one of the things that I want to talk about is what I'm just calling an invitation from the Holy Spirit. All right? An invitation from the Holy Spirit. And <clears throat> there's, there's things that I began to, to think about with this as I was asking the Lord what, do I want to, what He wanted me to share tonight. And, um, you know, all of us are on, you know, I remember when the Lord began to speak to me more about um, the kingdom, what Christ has accomplished, uh, began to speak to me more about identity, about His nature. And, and I began to, to think about how, like, man, Lord, I, the way I used to think about it is, man, Lord, I was so wrong for so many years. I had it all messed up, all wrong. My theology was, was terrible, and, and now I'm beginning to see, you know, correctly or whatever. And, and one of the things he began to speak to me about was, he said, don't look at it in terms of right and wrong. Like I was wrong back then and, and now I'm right. He says, he says, look at it in terms of, of you, you had some, you had, you're beginning to gain more correct understanding because it's always going to be a, it's always going to be a journey. And, and so in our, in our thinking, in our theology, in our understanding, um, we're, on a, we're on a process, right? We're always in this journey. And it's not so much about right and wrong. It's just about seeing more clearly. And so he said, you need to learn how to value your history with me, right? Like value where you've been within me. And recognizing that some of the things that I believed at one time that maybe weren't the, the clearest truth. Um, and how many of you know that, oh man, how do I say this without sounding blasphemous? Uh, there, there are different, there are various degrees of truth, right? Not all truth is equal. Okay, now is sin a truth? Is that a truth? Yes. And I focus so much on that for so long, right? But how many of you know it says that, um, it talks about how love covers a multitude of sins, right? So love's actually a greater truth than sin, right? Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy is a greater truth. And so... So understanding that there are things that I focused on that weren't the full picture. Mm -hmm. It was one piece of the puzzle, right? It's kind of like the illustration I like to use with um, when you have this, this puzzle, like 10,000 piece puzzle, mm -hmm. and, and you have just a few pieces that you've put together and you think, man, this is the whole picture or this is the big, this is the main focus, right? But if you, if you can see the big picture on the box, then you realize, man, there's something way more than these little pieces that I've got. There's a whole lot more to the big picture. And, and I need to start seeing where all this fits together. And so <clears throat> in thinking about that, um, we, I think a lot of times we don't really value the history, the journey that God has taken us on. And so he started talking to me about, um, I'm going to read this verse to you out of John 16. And I and I want to I want to just encourage you, especially those of you that you're you're beginning to experience uh, maybe a greater awakening of truth, right? You're beginning to experience a greater awareness of 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 truth. Like, man, this is it's like a whole new whole new thing that's just opening up. And it's sometimes it's easy to feel overwhelmed, right? We're, we're overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? All this crazy stuff now that God is showing me. And I feel like I've been in the dark for so many years. And, and there's this whole new context that God is revealing about Scripture, about what Christ has done, about the kingdom. And, and it can feel overwhelming at times. But I want to encourage you <clears throat> uh, with this verse here, John 16. Oh, doo -doo -doo, where am I? John 16, 12. All right? So Jesus says this to the disciples. He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. 
For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come, right? And he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you, right? <clears throat> this stood out to me today uh, where Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Mm. And I began to, and, and what the Holy Spirit started talking to me about today was that there's an invitation to have a deeper conversation on things that we've heard and things that we've seen, like things that God has revealed to us. And there's an invitation now where the Lord is saying, I want to have a deeper conversation with you on that thing. Because to this point, you've only been able to bear this much of what I want to show you. All right? Does that make sense? It's kind of like um, <clears throat> what, what, what I would say in 1996, this is the kingdom. <laughs> Obviously, I have a totally different or, you know, there's been a whole lot more upgrade in my thinking about what the kingdom is today versus when I first heard about it in the mid-90s. <clears throat> but I could only bear so much truth right. of, of the kingdom at that time. And I feel like God's been having conversations with us about, about His nature, you know, about our identity, uh, about what Christ has accomplished. Uh, uh, you know, we can use anything too, the prophetic, the apostolic, um, yeah. you know, the kingdom intercession, the, the, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, like all these things that we have understood up to this point. And it's like the Lord is saying, you know what? I've given you some downloads. I've given you some truth. I've given you some revelation, but there's an invitation to a deeper conversation on those things. Yeah. Right. There's, there's an invitation on a deep to, to, to experience a, to experience a deeper conversation on the things that you've only heard in part right and that's the thing that i've been i've been thinking about where the holy spirit's like man here's this revelation on the goodness of god and i'm thinking oh my goodness this changes everything man thank you lord this is amazing and it, it changed my my theology in so many ways and it was 20 years ago and he's saying you know and, and sometimes we can think like man yeah i got that 10 years ago 20 years ago and we feel like I've got a good grasp on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a good grasp on the goodness of God, that, that I, can, I can present that truth. And it's like the Holy Spirit is saying, let's have a deeper conversation on what you already know. Mm -hmm. Let's have a deeper conversation on this because there's always more in the river. Mm -hmm. Right? There's always more in the river of God. There's always more in that river of revelation, understanding, wisdom, right? <clears throat> and so, uh, so this, is, this is one of the things I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> um, what are you thinking, Gilbert? What do you got? Man, it's good stuff. Um, well, first, let me make sure that my mic is on. Mm. I'm mm. talking and stuff. So people out there, if y'all are, <laughs> good. If y'all can hear me, uh, just put me a thumbs up or something. Just let me know. Mic check really fast. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, good stuff. Um, yeah, we're definitely in a time right now where, where the invitation is being extended. Um, I've been feeling a pull, or even even a, a, a remembrance, um, in a time yeah. where Mike is good, bro. Good deal. Thank you so much. Um, it, I was reminded of of a time when I was very very studious. Like I was just constantly, there was an excitement, like you said, like when the Lord just downloads certain mm -hmm. things to you and you're grasping it and you're like, you get excited. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Revelation excites, it, 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 it's exciting. You're learning new things and you're comprehending new things and things that you didn't understand, all of a sudden the dots, they begin to connect, right? And, and you're constantly studious. And, and it's like you said, like there's just a, a, you're going with the flow of the river, right? You're going with the, with, with the flow. But then you get to this point where you, like you said, like we've got, you know, you get to a point where you, you, you feel like, okay, you know, you got it, you've chewed on it, you, you've owned it, and that's, that's yours, it's good. Um, but then there's, there's an unfolding that takes place, and it's like you're saying, like, 
but God is asking you and extending, it, it's time to go deeper on what you, you had already known. So even even like today, if I was here and turning the board and stuff, you know, I did feel that invitation of it's time to be studious again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's time to be studious again. Um, yeah. There's a freshness, you know, and, it, and I'm always reminded of when, when Jesus said, you know, like, when he, when, he, when he told him, you've heard it said before, but now I tell you this, right? That's good, man. Like, you, you've, already, you've already heard it, you've understood it, you practiced it, you grasped it, you followed it, it was great. You've heard it said before, but now I say this. And he begins to expound yeah. and, and give greater depth and definition to what he was about to share, right? Yeah. Um, and I feel like, like that's the <clears throat> invitation that, that we're at right now. Yep. But, but also what it, what it speaks about, too, is um, an invitation to, to be a student, to be a learner. But it's also a time of being a child again. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I don't, I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this. I'm going to read this. Yep. I'm going to re-highlight right, passages and, and things that I had already highlighted. Um, but I'm going to come to this as a child again. Right. You know what I mean? Because I think sometimes we get to a point, you know, where, where we grasp certain concepts and then we, not that we feel like we're elite, but you begin to feel like oh, I already got that. And then it's hard to celebrate where somebody else is learning and grasping it. You know, you forget that at one point that's where you were. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like they're coming into revelation of God's love or just the introduction of the prophetic. And you're like, I got that. I got that 20 years ago, brother. And but to be able to go back and, and just be a child again and in, and embrace that, you know, um, there, there's definitely an unfolding. So yeah. that's exciting. You know, man, I love that because it's one of the things when the Lord started talking to me about how we are we, we're, we've entered into a new era. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that um, he began to say to me is that when you enter into a new era, you don't go in as an expert. Oh, come on. Um, and he compared it to when Israel crossed the Jordan, and he says, you know, it's kind of like in the previous era, they had manna, and and then when they cross the Jordan, the manna ends, right? So you might have been the the, the expert in how to pick manna, cook manna, mm-hmm. eat manna, right? You might have been the, the world's greatest manna, manna yeah, you know, you, you're the greatest manna cooker in the whole, in the whole nation, but... When you enter into that new era, um, the that's no longer needed, right? So you've got to enter in not as an expert, but as a child. You've got to enter in. With, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of areas where I'm just like, man, Lord, yeah, I, I love the prophetic, and I've moved in the prophetic for for many years. But I feel in, in a lot of ways there's there's upgrade in everything right now. Yeah. Right. There's an yeah. upgrade in language. There's an upgrade in, of of understanding. And it's almost like areas where I thought I knew how to pray or intercede or prophesy. And I feel like right now I'm like, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> it's like, okay, Lord, I just need to follow you even more closely. Yeah. And it's easier, it's easy to get to get caught up in in what we've known and become comfortable with rather than than Holy Spirit just leading us into those into those areas and teaching us afresh. Mm-hmm. Uh, in those things. And so when I was thinking about this here in John 16, um, <clears throat> where he says you cannot bear this now, it means that you can't sustain it, mm. right? You can't uphold it. You can't support it. Come on. And, <clears throat> and so the thing that you realize is that the, the Lord will not give you something more. How do I say this? He won't give you something more than what you can bear right now. And, and that's why there's things that are coming to us fresh now. Like, well, how come I didn't see this 20 years ago? Because right. you couldn't bear it 20 years ago, yeah. right? There's things that God is, there's things that we believe right now that Holy Spirit is releasing fresh that maybe 10 years ago we would have said, man, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know about that. That's, that might be heresy, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and so we wouldn't have been able to bear it 10 years ago. But even in the things that we didn't see in fullness, like we didn't see this truth, the fullness of this truth, we only saw a certain measure. He was still giving us only what we could bear, not because he didn't want to give us the full revelation of it, 
but because we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to sustain it. Yeah. And so there's things that he's just been giving to us section by section, piece by piece, layer by layer, that it's like, okay, boom, I've got this piece. Oh, now there's this piece. And Holy Spirit is so good to us to, to reveal things in, in, that, in those stages of understanding, right? And so, you know, there's things that God is going to show me in five years that maybe I'm not ready for right now. Right. Right. There's things that maybe God is, is where, where I feel like, man, I've really got this really, really solid understanding on this area. And maybe I do. But maybe there's a whole lot more, and he wants to take me into a deeper conversation and what that looks like. Yeah. So I might have a good understanding now, you know, because right now, every, you know, um, man, I'm going to get on the board real quick. If that's all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right. Gilbert's playing multiple, multiple things tonight, and uh, appreciate that. <clears throat> so let me, uh, let me see. Are you, are you good? All right. Awesome. All right, so like one of the words right now that we've really been focusing on is the word reformation. And I don't mean like from Martin Luther. I'm not talking about, uh, I mean, that was a reformation, right? But there is, but today what I'm talking about, when I talk about, revel, revel, I want to say revel, revelation, but reformation, when I'm talking about reformation, what I want to really focus on is that reformation is about bringing the broken systems Back to the original design of God. And I'll explain what I mean by this. Um, <clears throat> in the fall of man in Genesis, what happens in the fall is that we see broken systems emerge. In other words, what was God's... Uh, so what are systems that are operating today in society? Well, we, we've got government, right? Government's a system. Uh, we've got education. Okay. Um, let's see. We we have spirituality. Regardless of what, you know, be, people have different perspectives, different uh, quote-unquote belief systems, religions, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have we have business. All right. We've got we've got all these different systems that are operating in society. All right. <clears throat> and and we will. We forget God is the creator. It says that all things have been created, what? By him and what? For him. Okay? That's terrible writing, but Lord Jesus, help us. All right, so, so, so here's what happens. In the fall in Genesis, everything that, all the systems that were operating in the earth or, does, or meant to operate in the earth, and there's obviously way more, those those are now in a broken state, right? So in creation, in the earth, we now have broken systems introduced from the fall. In other words, every, <clears throat> every social injustice, uh, every broken system, every crisis known to man, everything that has plagued humanity uh, for for millennia, all stem from this event in Genesis. When man chooses to live outside or independent, all right, independent from what? The kingdom of God, which is the governing system of God. This is the original governing system of God, is the kingdom. So when man chooses to live outside of this governing system called the kingdom, what's now happened is that there are counterfeit systems introduced into the earth that are broken systems. And so creation and the earth are now subject to this, and that's according to Romans chapter 8, that the earth is travailing and groaning because it was subjected to these broken systems. All right? Now, so the original intent of government was to protect, right? And to be sure that everyone has opportunity to live, to live in the fullness of their God-given rights, right? But what happens is the broken, under a broken system, government now is enslaving people. And you have, and I'm not, I'm not, this is not a political 
Don't, don't, I'm not trying to get political. I'm saying that even back in Genesis, you see, you see where the government of man is enslaving humanity, enslaving other people, right? I mean, just in, what is it, uh, where you start seeing Israel already is, is, is in bondage to Egypt um, in the Exodus. But even before then, you started seeing all these things. Education. Education originally designed in the kingdom to bring what? Wisdom knowledge and understanding the wisdom knowledge and understanding of god but under a broken system this wisdom knowledge and understanding is now sourced in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil all right this is where man is getting his wisdom knowledge and understanding now spirituality right well what was the original intent of this walking with god right communication with god now you've got all these crazy ideas, all these different uh, religions and ideas of, of God and whatever. Um, so now it's basically whatever, whatever man wants to create in his own image. Okay? Um, really, a lot of this is in humanism too. But anyway, uh, business. What about business? Well, business was designed to actually um, help all humanity to experience what the earth provides, what the earth, uh, all the resources of the earth, right? Um, but after the fall, business is now corrupted, all right? There's, there's now the haves and the have-nots, right? So you see poverty enter in. Uh, I mean, all these things are broken systems in the earth, right? But the other part that happens here is another broken system happens. This is, this is about creation in the earth. The other one, though, is in man himself. And the broken system here is in the mind and the heart. And that's according to Romans chapter 1. That the, that the heart became darkened and the mind became, became empty or futile. So when we talk about reformation, what we're talking about is bringing things back to the original design of the Father. What was the father's original design, his original dream, right? So there is, let me say it this way, there is original intent and there is original design. What's the difference? Original intent is really about the, the heart and motive you could, of God. You could say the dream of God. Right. What was in his heart? What was his motive? What was, what was the dream of God? What did God dream for humanity? What did God dream for creation? What was his original motive, his original heart? So you have to understand original intent to understand where we're going. You cannot understand the end unless you understand the intent in the beginning. All right, we're, we're going pretty fast. Sorry, <laughs> so, <laughs> we're we're uh, we're waste, we're using up a whole lot of board here. So now, original design is more about how is this going to happen? How is how is God's dream? How is His original intent going to manifest in the earth? In other words, what is the? Um, I think I had a, a word here better than what I'm thinking right now. Uh, what is? Yeah, what is the model, right? What is the model or the process, right, of how the design of God, in other words, how is this going to happen? Well, we see a, a small fragment. We see that part of the original design was God putting his image on man, and man was supposed to bring the kingdom into all the earth, right, all creation, all the earth, to where all these and more, everything else that's in the earth, would operate from the kingdom of God, from the governmental system of God. So, so what we've done, because we haven't understood this, uh, we've basically demonized the whole world. <laughs> we've, we've made a villain of everything that doesn't look like uh, you know, our brand and, uh, of, of spirituality or whatever not realizing that all of this 
Jesus has purchased, and here's the, here's the way that it's supposed to come back to its original intent, is that he puts his image back on humanity, that, that what man lost in the garden, which was that image of God, uh, Jesus restores, and the first place, reformation takes effect. Reformation, going, the broken systems, uh, going back to the original design, the first thing that reformation has to hit is right here, the mind and the heart. So the first place reformation takes place is right here in the heart and mind of man. And again, we're going back to Romans 1 where this was the broken system of man. Once you experience a true reformation, kingdom reformation in your mind and in your heart, you begin to realize that the, the goal of God is not for us to escape the earth. The goal of God is for us to come over here and bring the reformation we've encountered into the broken systems of humanity. This is where you now begin to infiltrate all the systems of the earth and bring the kingdom of God into all of these areas and bring them back to God's original intention. You are the design of God. How is God going to restore the earth? Through you. The gospel is not, oh God, please come and do something. The gospel is, you go and do something. All right? That's the gospel. We have had a gospel that has been totally dependent upon God to come and save us from this, you know, uh, hell on earth. And the, the reality is, is that God has not come to save you from this. He has actually equipped you to transform it. <laughs> Every social injustice in the world is waiting for you to show up. Every broken system in the world is waiting for you to show up. That's why it says there, Romans 8, right? It doesn't say that, um, that the earth is travailing and groaning for God to appear. It doesn't say that. Right. It says the earth is groaning and travailing for the sons of God to manifest. Right? That includes daughters. Okay. For the children of God to man. Why is the earth groaning, travailing? I mean, we read that verse all the time, right? The earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God, brothers and sisters. And we start to preach and uh, get all excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so, and, and, and it's like, okay, but, but to what end? Like, well, what, what does that mean? How, how, is, how is the earth I mean, why? Why is the earth travailing for Gilbert Gomez to show up as a son of God? Mm. Right? Why, why is the earth travailing, groaning for, for you to show up as a son and a daughter of God? Because you are the design of God to transform those broken systems back to the original state that God intended. So, so the earth is not waiting for God to show up. Scripture doesn't say that. Scripture says the earth is waiting for you to show up. Mm -hmm. And not just to show up, but for you to show up knowing who you are. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and it, it reminds me of Jonah. Mm -hmm. The word to Jonah was go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Go to Nineveh and give this word. And God already knew that word is going to transform the nation from top to bottom. Yeah. And Jonah didn't want to go. Yeah, because the word was contrary to what Jonah believed. He believed they deserved judgment. Right. And God was like, no. And this is in the Old Testament, right? So pretty much is, <laughs> this is Jonah's mindset. Those are not our people. Those are or evil people. They're sin. You know, the Old Testament is still filled with us versus them. Mm -hmm. All right. It's an us versus them mentality. But in the kingdom, it's not us versus them. It's God's for all humanity. And God desires that all humanity would experience the fullness of what the kingdom provides. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, so it, it, to me, the thing with Jonah is you see where Jonah goes the total opposite way. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You know, we, we have been good in the past at isolating ourselves from society, creating a vacuum that darkness fills, 
and then turning around and judging the darkness. That's exactly what I was thinking. Right? We've mm -hmm. judged the darkness that we actually gave room for. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the kingdom of God is not a kingdom of isolation. It's a kingdom of infiltration. Right. It's the yeast that goes into the whole lump of dough. And, and the whole lump of dough is affected by the, by the yeast of the kingdom of God, right? right. <clears throat> but the thing about Jonah that stands out to me is how Jonah goes the opposite way. And when he does that, it says that the storms hit the seas. Come on. He's in the boat with other people. Storms are raging over the sea. Now, the book of Revelation tells us that one of the meanings of the seas is humanity. The sea of humanity, right? And so, so the storms are raging over the sea of humanity because Jonah refuses to show up where God has sent him. Right? And so, and so, so what happens is they start like, this is really unnatural. This is, there's something going on here. And so they start trying to figure out what is the cause of this? And everything points back to Jonah. Mm -hmm. And they and they finally confront him and they're like, who are you? Yeah. And he says, I'm a prophet of the God of heaven. So he knew who he was mm -hmm. and he knew who his God was. He knew who the father was. He knew his God and he knew his identity. And he knew that he was running away from where God had sent him. Mm. And, and he knows the solution. Yeah. The solution to stop the storms, the, the storms that are raging over humanity. He says, throw me overboard. How do you stop the storms, the crisis that are raging in humanity right now, in the nations right now? You need to throw people who know their God and who know their identity back into the sea of humanity. And because when they throw Jonah overboard, the storm stops. Yeah. Yeah. The storm stops. And we have tried to, much of the church, even in our, in our thinking, in our teaching, in our theology, has been we need to stay away from the systems of this world. Everything is evil. Everything is corrupt. And, and, but here's the thing. The only, the only thing that the enemy can do is counterfeit, not create. Right. So whatever system is out there the enemy is using, he is not the father of it. He's the perverter of it. Mm -hmm. He perverted, he twisted the original intent of God for government, for business, for uh, family right, uh, for creativity, for technology. The church has been so afraid of technology. We're afraid of anything new, right? That, that's the devil, you know. And, and we, we're afraid of everything that, that could look like technology because for some reason, somewhere down the road, we, we somehow assume that technology is equal to Antichrist. Right, yeah. And you can't find that in Scripture, right? And, and, but again, <laughs> even technology is originated in the father because he's the most creative the most creative being in the universe yeah. and so if there is something technology is being used in a negative way for that's simply a perversion we don't isolate from it we need to take back and occupy that area and bring it back into kingdom alignment yeah. so that that technology is benefiting humanity we should be creating um things that are helping healthcare. Mm -hmm. that are helping um, social reform, that are helping, um, you know, things that, that can make life better for people, that can right. make life easier for people that maybe are struggling in certain areas, right? Whatever that looks like. <clears throat> but we should be the most innovative people on the face of the earth. But, but we're, so, we're so busy demonizing what we, what we fear that we don't, we don't give ourselves the opportunity to reform, mm -hmm. to bring it back to God's original design. You know, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, and I think uh, a big part of it has to do with our misinterpreted understanding of the last days. I think that's where a lot of the root mm -hmm. is. Sure, um, sure. Everything's going to get evil. It's going to be bad. You know. Well, if you don't if you don't understand original intent, then you will misinterpret exactly. the days the days ahead, right? Yeah. So when you mentioned that, you know, if you don't understand the beginning, right, the origin, then you definitely won't understand the end. And it's awesome, as you're saying that, like I see 
I'm reminded of like how Jesus, right in the Old Testament, when when someone got leprosy, right, they had to be put out mm-hmm. within a certain distance from everybody else, right? Yeah. Because if that person came by you or actually got any touch to you or even breathe on you, like they had this idea that now you were gonna get infected and now you have leprosy, right? And and so people were like afraid of being around lepers. Them at a distance, keep them over there. They're they're bad, or or they even consider leprosy to be a curse. Like mm-hmm. you know, God was mad at that at that person. That's why they have it. They did something wrong. That's judgment. But I love how Jesus in the New Testament comes and he touches the leper. Mm-hmm. And it's not Jesus that becomes affected with leprosy. It's the leper gets affected and becomes clean. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So so Jesus shifts our understanding and he models that we're not called to run away and separate ourselves from <clears throat> the leprosy that we think is like, okay, that's evil, that's bad, or that's judgment. But yeah. no, that we're called to go in there and touch it and affect it. Yeah. That doesn't affect us, we affect it. You right. know. Right. Um, but it's so true. Like the 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 systems that were that, that are in place, <clears throat> you know there was that empty vacuum that took place because we were so focused on, um, I'm, I'm trying to be careful how I say this because I don't want it to come out wrong, but evangelism became the sole purpose of just, the main number one um, focus of evangelism was just souls. Mm-hmm. Come to the church, come to the church. And so we're inviting everybody to just come to the church, come to the church, come to the church. Yeah. And every other system became, you know, just the empty, just emptiness. Um, and so when you leave something empty, eventually something's got to occupy it. Something's got to fill it, right? Um, and so I think a lot of what we're seeing today is a result of these positions of influence and these systems that have been vacant, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but, but now we're in a new time now where, where the Lord is throwing us back in the water. Right. Yeah. And and I think that part of that is um, the fact that when we demonize Mm -hmm. something, we remove our responsibility to transform it. Yeah. Because you cannot you cannot father what you don't believe in. Uh, Romans four says that Abraham believed and he was and he became the father of many nations. Right. So in faith, he believed. And became the father of many nations. It's around right around 4:17, Romans 4, 17, 18. You think about that. Abraham could only father what he believed in. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe that everything in the earth ultimately belongs to, to the Father, then you won't believe that you can reform it. Right. If you believe it belongs to the enemy, then it's like, oh, that's just evil. So let's we get rid of it, but it not you know the enemy is a you know he's a he's a liar he's a thief he's a counterfeiter he's not a creator, so none of these systems have been created by the enemy. Right. All of this, everything Colossians says very clearly that all things have been created by him and for him. Talking about the Lord, right? Talking about Jesus, by him and for him. So all of the systems that we see out there, and and right now with education, you know, these are some of the bigger ones that I just you know thought about uh, real quick. Um, with all of these things out there, it's so easy to become critical, mm-hmm. right? The church has become critical. Listen, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, if you want to bring reformation, you can't just be, I'm I'm this political party and that's it. I'm not saying you have to be multiple parties. I'm saying that you have to be able to see the the value in others that don't agree with you. And you have to see that they that even though they might have a different perspective in some things, um, that they are not evil. Right. They might believe some things that you don't believe, and it might be lies that they're believing. Mm-hmm. It might be stuff that is total contrary to the kingdom of God, but it doesn't make th- their 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 thinking doesn't define their value. Right. Right. They are still valuable. Right. And they're still valuable to God. So, so if, if I had uh, someone in the Democratic Party 
approach me to, hey, we want you to be on, on a prayer team for, for, for President Biden, I'd say, okay. Well, wait a minute. No, well, how can... <laughs> if, if, I, if I had somebody approach me for, pre- for former President Trump saying, we want you to be on a prayer team for former President Trump, he's mm-hmm. about to run again, and we want you to be on the prayer team, I'd say, okay. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Why? Because you know what? I'm going to pray for truth to prevail. And I'm going to pray for transformation to prevail. Mm-hmm. So regardless, now I just said two names that will divide this entire nation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. unfortunately, it will divide down, split down almost 50-50, those two names, right? And, and it's like you, you, in the church, we've had this mentality of you love them or hate them. Mm. No, no, you love them or pray for God to give you some love for them. Yeah. Because yeah. there needs to be transformation. In all of those parties, in all of those politicians, there needs to be the kingdom of God. What would happen if President Biden or former President Trump, the the revelation of the kingdom of God and of the reason they were born began to awaken in their hearts, Mm. right? Now, regardless of what opinions I might have, the main opinion is his. Right. Right? What's his opinion? Well, I'm pretty convinced that he loves them both. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Right, I'm pretty convinced the Lord loves them both, and so, so I just think, and that's when. So, if you're political, then it's a problem. But if you're governmental, well, the kingdom is governmental, not political. Right. So if I'm if I'm governmental, it doesn't matter the politics. Mm-hmm. I'm not coming in as a politician. I'm cover, coming in as an ambassador of the government of God. Mm-hmm. That changes everything. Yeah. Right. So I'm coming in. To that Democratic Party or that Republican Party or that Independent Party or whatever grassroots or whatever party you got nowadays, I'm coming in not as a representative of your party. I'm coming in as a citizen of the kingdom of God and as an ambassador of the government of God, which is what? Representing a foreign nation and a foreign government into this nation and government. That's right. That's right. Heaven on earth. So when you when you begin <laughs> to think like that, or even education, right? Well, what's God's original design for education? And you begin to seek the Lord. Because listen, whether, whether those that are here and those that are watching online, in some way, shape, or form, you are a reformer. Mm-hmm. Right? You are a reformer. It might be in a school system. It might be in business. It might be in a community where you're bringing reformation to poverty and, and to violence. Uh, man, I was just in, in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And we went to we went to this uh, restaurant in the middle of what people would call ghetto. Like this is a ghetto, poverty stricken, poor, like mm-hmm. you know, in the ghetto, right? Kind of that's what people would say. And and it's very, very low income, you know, the crime, all, all that stuff was like super bad. Mm-hmm. And and they had um, a large portion of that community that was suffering from like diabetes, high blood pressure, um, heart disease, and come to find out, well, there was there were no stores. There were no fresh uh, vegetables, fruits, uh, ingredients. <clears throat> Everybody just bought from from the corner stores. Mm-hmm. So you know maybe maybe they got some hot dogs that have been rolling there for three days. They you know they buy that. Mm-hmm. Maybe they you know donuts, um, you know soda. And so the community, health-wise, was yeah. impoverished just as much as their finances. And so, so this, this I forgot the gentleman's name, but has this vision of, well, let's plant a garden. And, and let's start serving up healthy meals. And in, the middle of the, in the middle of that. Of what we would say, what we would call it here. Yeah, yeah of, of hopeless, not, you know, it's not even worth anything, you know. And houses are falling apart, families are falling apart, health is, is terrible, all of these things. And so they, they build this amazing, beautiful um, farmhouse-style restaurant. And in the back, are, in, and you can tour it all in the back, rows and rows and rows, fruits, vegetables, herbs. They've got this really amazing uh, coffee shop. Mm. And a grocery store where they're selling, they got fresh eggs, they got chickens back there, they got, you know, goats back there, they've got all this stuff. And they're serving, they're serving meals there. They're, the employees were um, 
all the employees I saw were young African American um, men that had tattoos everywhere. They'd been in prison, mm. and man, they were the most amazing, res respectable, honoring, um, you know, workers there. Mm. I mean, just amazing guys. You could see. I mean, there was just so much. They were serving. They were they were working. They were taking taking these young men that probably wouldn't have been able to get a job somewhere else because of their history, mm. or at least not a good paying job, and to give them that opportunity, and they're discipling them, they're loving on them, they're showing them their value. Do you realize that they are transforming a community yeah. through a restaurant and a garden? Mm. The, the original vision was the garden, just having a garden there. <laughs> That's yeah. funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> a garden. Yeah. Um, and it's transforming a community. They're the the health, the uh, you know, and these young men that maybe would have maybe turned to to violence, to mm -hmm. drugs, to to gangs, whatever. They're working. They have a sense of value. They're going to school. They're I mean, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens when you begin to get what was the father's dream for this community? What was the father's original intent for for this people group? for this neighborhood, for, for this nation, right? For this city, for this system, right? For government, for education, for what? What was the father's original design for all of that? And man, when you begin to capture the father's original design, now something happens where you get to partner with him to birth it in the earth. Yeah. Right, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And even if you're saying all that, you know, the invitation right now from Holy Spirit I see like there's an invitation to share headspace with the Father. You know, <clears throat> so that's man. I'm I'm like I'm I'm everywhere because I'm feeling a lot of things right now. So I'm I'm everywhere. Um, you know, I really wish that they would teach this like in high school, right? So that way, by the time you graduate, you have a sense of I know what I want to do, rather than going four, six, eight years of a university, college, that later on you graduate and you're like, I still don't know what I want to do. But if, if this was grasped at, at, such, at an early age in life, and, and man, like this would re really, really talk about reforming, you know, where, where this truth like this could be deposited into the next generation. <clears throat> Um, you know what's crazy man. though, Gilbert, is is I think you have a lot of people um, who sense, like like they have a hatred maybe for injustice. Mm. Right. Um, injustice angers them, and and so because the church hasn't had room for that, mm -hmm. because the church hasn't valued that, or maybe it's poverty, or maybe it's corruption, or whatever. And because we in the church haven't understood this, we don't understand what they carry. And so they don't find a place where they're valued in the church. So they have to go out and try and they get with some other group that um, is trying to bring reformation in a, maybe in a, a way that's different from the way right. the father originated right. it. Right. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so then you, you, it's almost like, oh, here's an example, man. You know, the Beatles talk about how, they talk about in history how the Beatles went to the church mm. and they were rejected. Uh, even Gandhi talks about how he, he says, you know, I love, I love the Jesus in the Bible, but I don't love the Jesus I see in the church. Right? And so you have somebody who has such an influence throughout history, Gandhi, going in a different route. What if Gandhi would have be, would have understood the truth of of Jesus and, and the kingdom of God and been a voice that would have championed the, the body of Christ? Right. Mm -hmm. What if, what if the Beatles would have um, been received mm -hmm. by by the church, but it, they weren't understood? Right. And what they were doing would have been considered, you know, like oh, that's secular because we've had such a divide of spiritual and, and secular, right? And, and so the, the reality now is that you have people that have influenced generations in, for, for something way beneath the truth of the kingdom. 
when if we would have understood kingdom, we could have received them, mm -hmm. brought them into kingdom reformation, mm -hmm. and had and had that group impact a whole generation for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't we didn't value what they carry because if it doesn't sound like worship music, it's not valuable. Right. Right. If it doesn't look like a man preaching behind a pulpit, it's not valuable. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm even also reminded of a story that I heard John Paul Jackson share that he had went to like Great Britain or one of these areas where they have all these old school castles. Mm. And there um, they introduced, he met a young man. It was a, it was a private meeting at one of the castles over there. And this young man was one of the leaders of a, of a satanic cult in that area. And he became like the highest ranking member. And as John Paul Jackson is talking and conversating with him, he sees him as a little child mm -hmm. as oh, yeah. he's talking. And he sees him as a little kid, but John Paul Jackson sees the Lord standing next to him, talking to him as a little kid. And he begins to tell him that as a child, you would hear the voice of God. But when you went to the church, they rejected you like you were crazy. So he went on to be to live with rejection because he didn't know how to process what he was hearing. And so he ended up turning his sensitivity that he was very sensitive to, to the things of the spirit and yeah. using it for for something else. You yeah. know? Yeah. And and so, man, like, man, tables are turning. You know, I think a, a lot of it, and I'm gonna we'll end with this. Um, it's been an hour already somehow. <laughs> it's like, man, I feel like, I'm like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it feels like it's already it feels like it's been 20 minutes. <laughs> Um, you know, the thing, the thing I began to think about the other day is how many people have grown up, you know, like talking about children, right? Children, youth, you know, in the, those early ages, like dreaming about a better world, right. dreaming about a better place. And, and it's like there's these thoughts, there's these dreams that, that man, the world could look like this. Mm. And then when... It, it's like, but then they get slapped with what they call reality, right? No, it's it's all going to burn up anyway, and it's all going to be destroyed anyway. Which are all uh, the only place they find that is in Peter, and it's it's not what that's not the meaning. It's misinterpreted. Um, because it's like, what kind of father gives you an inheritance and then burns it? I mean, that's pretty messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, you know, the inheritance of the earth has been given to us. And then he, because that was part of the original design. The original design was, here's my image so that you can rule like me and rule for me. And here's all the earth, right? Notice the last thing that God creates is humanity. Mm -hmm. He creates everything else, the atmosphere, the land, the territory. Why? Because he, because as a king, God is creating kings in the earth. And there has to be territory for them to function as in dominion and rulership and kingship. So, so he creates man last so that there is something for man to rule in. Now, yeah. the problem is that we have had a, a wrong idea of dominion and rulership because we've only seen broken systems of government. Yeah. We've seen rulership, dominion, and kingship as domination. And it's control, not. Right. Yeah, control and domination. That's what we've seen as government because we've had a bad model. The kingdom government is not domination. The kingdom government is empowerment. Mm -hmm. oh. That's why apostles and prophets in Ephesians are the foundation so that the church can be built up as high as it needs to go. Yeah. You know, because apostles and prophets are part of the government of the kingdom or part of the government of the church. They are not on the top as the ceiling or as the top pinnacle to where everybody reaches that and then stops. Mm -hmm. They're not the limit. They're not the ceiling. They're the foundation. And so, so what, what does that mean? It means that the body of Christ can be built as high as it needs to go to the fullness of Christ. Yeah. Because the kingdom, the, the government of the kingdom is never about suppression. It's never about holding down. It's always about empowering into the fullness. So, so we haven't understood that. So, so think about it. In the garden, God, God all the territory is created, and then he creates those who will rule in the territory mm -hmm. for him and like him. We know what happens in the fall. Every, you know, the territory goes to the prince of this world. 
Jesus takes it back from the prince of this world. Right? right? And, and so I'm not going to get into all that because we don't have time. But, but catch this. When, when Jesus, before the cross, is praying in the garden, mm -hmm. the garden of Gethsemane, what's happening? He is sweating great drops of blood. Right? <clears throat> what was the, the first thing that God created was the territory so that when man is created, he has something to exercise government mm -hmm. upon. When the blood of Jesus hits the territory, he's already redeeming the territory in preparation for the kings that are about to be made through his death, burial, and resurrection. Because he's restoring what the first Adam lost. First Adam lost what? Dominion, kingship, authority. The last Adam, Jesus, is doing what? Restoring what the first one lost. So he, he re, he's bringing a redemption to the territory because of the fact that he is about to, he's telling us, I'm about to raise up kings again, but to raise up those that have governing solutions for the earth. Dominion for me is not about domination. Dominion is about governing solutions to the broken systems plaguing humanity. Right. Right? Does that make yeah, sense? Absolutely. So, so yeah. Fun times, good times, ending time. <laughs> um, all right, this was fun. But uh, yeah, so, so I, I believe there is an invitation from the Holy Spirit to go into a deeper conversation of what we have heard and what we have seen and what we've understood. Um, <clears throat> it's as if there is an invitation, like we, we understood uh, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. And there's, and the Holy Spirit is saying there's so much more to this. Even the stuff I shared tonight, uh, you know, it's like there's so much more to this. There's so much more to the kingdom. There's so much more to what Christ has done uh, to, to our identity, to what Scripture tells us, to the truth. Uh, there's so much more. And, and, I've, and I just want to pray that we will enter into this as a child, not as an expert. And, and to remember that the Holy Spirit will only give us as much as what we can bear. And so I pray that we, we will be able to, to bear more of, of what He wants to reveal uh, because there are things still in the heart. I mean, think about that verse we read earlier in John 16. Think about that verse, that there are things in the heart of Jesus that He wanted to share 2,000 years ago but couldn't, but those things can be revealed now. Right? That's amazing. It's amazing. 2,000 years ago, there were things in the heart of Jesus that he said, I want to tell you guys this, but I can't. You're not ready for it. And yet he's revealing those things to us now, and there's more to come. <laughs> there's more to come. And so, so we thank you, Lord, for that. And uh, do I want to get into that? <clears throat> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this. This will be part of my prayer. Uh, you can write this verse down. It's Acts 13, 36. It talks about how David served his own generation. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, that right there, um, something stood out to me uh, uh, last week on that verse. It says, for David, had, after he had served his own generation, the word served, Number one, let me say this. Um, you are created, every single one of you are created to serve your generation. To bring something to the table of this generation that nobody else can bring like you. And, and where it says that he served his generation, that word served there means, uh, in the Greek, it, is, it was used for the people that would row. You know how they had those big ships back in the day? And they had those rowers, the people that would row that boat. Literally, it was the people who were propelling the boat, propelling the vessel. So what David, or what, what it says here is that David actually propelled his generation forward. And I want to pray that, um, that we would capture the heart of the Father in how we can propel our generation forward, how we can propel um, this time forward forward into the kingdom of God, into the things of God, 
and, and what God has designed and destined for this time and for this generation. This is not a generation that the enemy owns. This is not a time that the enemy owns. This is, this is the time and the generation that Jesus already purchased. And the land has been redeemed. The territory has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And now the, the, the earth is looking for kings to show up. Not kings to dominate, kings to begin to bring the solutions of God into the broken systems of man and to transform those broken systems back into the kingdom dimensions that they were designed to operate in or the kingdom realms they were designed to operate in to see what education is supposed to look like, what business is supposed to look like and every other system out there. So, so that's my prayer. I pray that um, you got something out of this and, and that it makes sense to you. <laughs> And more than that, that it stirs something in you and it activates something in you. And so, Father, I just thank you for, um, for the propelling of this generation by the, the kings of the king. <laughs> you are the king of kings. And we thank you, Father, that you have made us heirs, joint heirs with Christ. And we're not here to try and, and dominate we are not here to, um, to enslave, Lord. We are here to empower people into the greatest governing system in the entire universe, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God it has, uh, has the most equality, has the most abundance, has the most solutions, the most creativity, innovation, transformation, power, authority. Um, worth and value of any government that has ever existed or will ever exist. And so, Father, we thank you that you have placed us in this time for this generation. We were not born too early or too late. We were born specifically for such a time as this. And I pray, Lord, that we begin to capture that revelation of why we are here and to be the reformers that you've called us to be. And I just declare that that reformation in our mind and our heart will continue as Jesus reveals to you the things, as the Holy Spirit reveals to you the things that have been in Jesus' heart that maybe we couldn't bear before, but, but we can bear them now. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're preparing us for. And Father, we give you all the thanks and all the honor for everything that is taking place in the unseen and that hasn't even manifested yet. We haven't even begun to see it yet. And so, Holy Spirit, we say yes to your invitation to a deeper conversation of the things you've already revealed. And you're saying there's so much more that you've, you've heard and you've seen. There's so much more to all of that. We accept your invitation to a deeper conversation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We appreciate y'all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for showing up. Uh, if you'd like to give online, you can go to manywatersglobal.org. You can give on there. Uh, if you also remember, uh, end of May, May 29th and 30th, May 1st, oh wait, I'm sorry, April 29th and 30th and May 1st. That'll be in Floresville. Um, and then May 22nd, that's the School of the Spirit in Floresville for prophetic upgrade and training. And then May 22nd, we're going to have uh, time here at Church of Acts of vision casting and, uh, and a picnic, potluck, fun day after service. So hopefully you can join us for that. Appreciate y'all. Love you. We will see you when we see you. Bless you.